right. Hey everyone, can you hear us? We have people here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have people here. No. <laughs> All right. Let me see how I can. Yeah, I'm not sure how this thing works. Let me see. And block. Oh, we have four people here. Okay, which is good. Yep. Okay. okay. Awesome. Well, let's see. Let's give. Sorry, we're a little late, having some troubles with audio and some video issues. <laughs> So uh, welcome everyone that's here. Uh, so this is our, well, not our first live session. I think we've done a third, couple yeah, third in the past, third but it's been kind of sporadic, but we're trying to get on a more regular routine type of thing. So, and, uh, you know, kind of answer more questions and have a weekly topic and all that. So, um, awesome. Well, guys, um, you know, I was asking, right, should I be here? He said, yes. And because we are a team, so that's why I'm here. So I'm not going to provide much valuable information rather than just uh, maybe in the future I will. But uh, I wanted to at least say a welcome message to everybody who's here, 29 people. No, no, with that, I mean, this is kind of the technical side over here, I guess. And um, she's like kind of taking over the uh, business side of the business, I guess, business manager. So as far as like uh, any U-Haul, scheduling, uh, financials, all that stuff, that's going to be kind of her department. And, uh, and uh, like I said, more of the... I've, gotten out in the shop a lot more um so um that, that helps us make more money and helps get more people in and out of here quicker mm -hmm. um although sometimes their times are a little extreme but uh it is what it is i guess well 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 i'm gonna say a welcome message to everybody who's here and uh meanwhile you guys let us know uh where you are at right now so we we know um we know where you at. <laughs> All right, so welcome everyone to our weekly live stream. We are absolutely thrilled to have everybody here. Thirty-four people now, and no matter you are our uh, long-term subscriber or the first time here, welcome. Um, so, as you, as everybody tuning in, so today's topic we have uh, set is how to increase your horsepower on your trucks. I'm sure Ryan has a lot of great information to share with you guys. Uh, while we're waiting. Still, um, I'm going to borrow uh, a few seconds of your time. Um, pl please don't leave me. Uh, <laughs> I promise this section will be fun from Sophia, and uh, you'll get entertained from Sophia for a little bit um, while I'm reading a wonderful script of our sponsor. And, um, you know, you you'll hear me uh, reading this uh, script while well, as a English is a second language. So I think the entertainment it will be fun. All right, so I'm going to get started. Um, keep your truck or heavy equipment in working order it means staying on top of inspections, but all those systems can start adding up when it's just you doing the work. The people at Full Bay, Full Bay, make sure you, you guys remember, uh, thought about this and they've put together a maintenance checklist for, for you to follow. It's totally free and it, it will walk you through what to look for in the engine, the exterior and exterior. Um, interior of the cab and, and the undercarriage and more. So you can use it as a PDF on your phone or a tablet or print it out if you wanted to keep a paper copy around. So head over to fullbay.com slash checklist to grab it. So we I have downloaded the uh, checklist from them before in preparing our future video, um, how to know when to do certain maintenance um, items on your truck so it was wonderful uh, checklist you guys can keep in mind so hopefully this section is not too boring but i'm gonna head over to to ryan since we have a uh, 36 wonderful people here um here you go all right so kind of looking where everybody's at here so somebody said they're in thailand so um i lived there for a little while at the uh at the embassy for a year when i was in the military but uh, so it's pretty cool hoping to get back there this winter Mm -hmm. um uh, moses lake a uh, nice little truck stop up there i've stayed at a couple a uh, few times little mom and pop one i can't remember the name of it but, uh yeah pretty cool places i always like uh, being up in oregon and washington I've seen wyoming wyoming's a fun place too a little windy so but uh yeah yeah so glad everybody's here ohio <clears throat> that's good so right hopefully not too far away so. all right um maybe you got well you know the <clears throat> thing is that i was asking ryan hey can we uh 
prepare a list of things to talk in case we get, you know, off track. And Ryan said, don't worry about it. I have everything <laughs> here. So that's it. So I'm going to have Ryan to, um, to, to start a topic. If you guys have any questions, meanwhile, feel free to uh, leave a comment there. So I will remind him so we can um, get some answer uh, questions answered in this live stream. Okay. Um, so yeah, I uh, I don't want to keep it too short, or uh, it's going to be a little bit short today. Uh, we we uh, we have another engagement here this evening, so we're going to have to kind of cut it short right about five o'clock today. So we got about twenty three minutes or so left, roughly, give or take. Um, Ernie's Ernie's truck stop. That's the name of the one. So yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice place. So um, so thank you for that, Leon. So. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, horsepower is kind of the topic of today increasing. So there's a couple of different ways that I know of. Um, so the first and easiest is is probably a like a, a tuner such as PDI, um, which I've used myself. Um, and on, on my on my my older T660 with a uh, ISX15. Uh, yeah, after I put that T PDI on on performance mode, like. I would never go back to, to stock or um, or uh, uh, economy mode again. So I mean, especially it, it, it you know a uh, 425 basically pulled like like a 525. So it uh, makes a big difference uh, with something like that. So and, and then there's a lot of add-ons for that as well, such as uh, you know intake manifolds, turbos, and stuff of that nature. Um, so that's one way an aftermarket route. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over these briefly, then we can kind of elaborate more as we go down the uh, on the road here. Um, second way is going to be electronically through, um, I guess, OEM software or even aftermarket software, uh, such as coming in, Cummins Insight or uh, a Davy or I mean, Auto. So the Packard. One thing I like about Packard, the MX13 engines, is that uh, you can do an all like even if you have a, a 455, you can do an all software upgrade. I mean, it's kind of expensive. Uh, I know when I had my MX13, I had a 455. And you can have that turned up to 510 or 515, somewhere in there. I don't remember the exact number. Um, through the dealer, where they basically order, you pay for the software. They order it through through uh, Washington, through Renton, Washington, and they send out the file to the dealer. They upload it. Um, I believe it was like three three thousand or three thousand five hundred dollars for that that horsepower upgrade. And it was like I said, all software. Um, so that's one way. And and it's out of a 13 liter, you know, pushing over 500 horsepower with decent fuel economy. Uh, I think that's a uh, for the price. I mean, if you want that extra horsepower, is a, is a good avenue. I mean, like with PDI, you're in about twenty four hundred bucks or so, roughly. Um, so if you can get an all OEM software on a uh, Packard MX thirteen for that, for you know three to thirty five hundred is what they were. Like I said, I can't quote what they were today. Um, so that's not a not a bad deal either. Um, so the third way is going to be with basically a hardware upgrade. Um, to where you're putting on again intakes, turbos, um, or actually cams you know I, I got a lot of guys with uh uh cat c15s that are running marine cams and all kinds of crazy stuff and i don't know like i'm, I'm happy myself if you've got 500 horsepower you know 13 speed 336 342 rears um in in my opinion i think you're for, for at least for dry van anyways running cross country like i was doing I, i'd be pretty satisfied with that um so we'll, we'll kind of open it up from there uh, with some questions and and uh, we can kind of elaborate more. I mean, like I said, with what we, um, I have the Snap-on ProLink Ultra is uh, what I use here in the shop and uh, like some Series 60s and stuff like that. We, we have been able to, uh, to, do some, uh, to do some upgrades I mean, as far as horsepower upgrades. And it's all kind of, uh, I guess, CPL driven. So I've, I've gotten comments before like, oh, you're just blindly upgrading horsepower. And then when I worked at CAT, um, you know, I worked on the power system side, so I worked on big, you know, um, C32, you know, bigger, bigger, 34, uh, 3500 series, 3600 series and all that. And uh, and usually, like, the way that they were built and programmed, they may give me two, one to four different horsepower options in uh, CAD ET, to where if that engine wasn't designed to go past those limits, it's not, obviously, there's built-in limitations where it's not going to let you go over that horsepower. So if it only gives me some engines only give me two options to for different horsepower settings, or it might be giving me three or four. So depending on the way that engine, what what critical parts that engine was um, 
built with, that's where it's basically going to limit you. And that's what I see with most most OEM softwares is that uh, whatever that engine, what part, whatever gear train, cam, whatever that was shipped with from the factory, you're going to be limited to those components. And, uh, and, and, and with that, the program or the, or the, the flash file, I guess, is going to be that's that's what you're going to be able to to i'm trying to say this uh, you're going to be limited by those components so and usually it's smart enough your your the way that the, your program is done that it's only going to let you move up so it's not like oh i'm just turning this up crazy i, I don't know what i'm doing no it's it's not going to let you turn it up more than than what your what the engine's designed with those components to do so but um Take some questions, maybe? Yeah, well, I, let me ask you a question. So you mm -hmm. mentioned about the, the CPL driven. So for the PDI specifically, is it still PD and P, was that P, P, PDL driven or? Is, is no, from what I've seen with PDI, I believe it's a roughly a 17% uh, horsepower gain. And with, with PDI as well, I mean, you get better, it optimizes your fuel economy and then you got the ability to do regions and all that stuff too. So that's something that's not um, CPL driven. So then you may want to look at some other component, like what your transmission and everything else is, is, is rated at. So, um, cause I've had customers here in the shop that have uh, C15s that are all souped up Marine cams running over 700 horsepower. And they've got a uh, RT 6913, which uh, on a, on a Eaton transmission, um, whatever that first number is, is the torque range. So if you see a RTLO 16, 913 or 918, whatever, uh, that first number is what is your torque rating. So that'd be 1600 torque. Or if you got an 18, 918, that'd be 1800 torque. Or if you got a 20, that'd be 20, uh, 2000, uh, torque. But usually an 18 will, will, you know, I've got plenty of guys that come in that have an 18, 918 or 913 that are running 600 horse plus, and they don't have any, um, any issues at all so well actually we had like i said this guy came in his uh, one of his main shafts and counter shafts was going out or actually the main shaft because it was coming out of gear and stuff and um we put in when he put an 18 9, 18 in it and it was fine after that so but as all said is considered there are uh like the fro's there are 15 uh 15 16 uh, 15 210s which are at 10 speed they're 1500 rated so i mean yeah, if you're getting 500 horsepower and you're going to put PDI in, then that's when you might want to start thinking, oh, I got a transmission that's rated right at 1,500 foot pounds. So um, that you, that's something you want to keep in mind before you kind of go crazy um, with, with a lot of horsepower. You may need to put a different transmission in. And even if you're swapping that tranny out, like I've like with the with the FROs, I've seen uh, where they'll take a, a, a 15 for a, a core on a 16 and, and stuff like that. So Interesting. We have some <clears throat> interesting questions there. Let me have Ryan to race through and maybe pick a few interesting questions that can be uh, valuable for other people. I think it's not like like we don't think your <laughs> question is not great, but maybe something that we can have time to address today. Yeah. Uh, other questions I'll take note of and we address later. So uh, G Walker, um, what do you crank a DD15 to 505 with 342 rears, 10 speed? Um, again, um, I, uh, going back to the transmission, I would see what model that is. If it's a, if it's, if it's an FRO 15210, um, that's a 1500. And typically the 15s, they do not have a cool transmission core. The 16s usually have an internal or an external transmission core. Um, so I probably, like I said, if it doesn't have a core or anything and it is a 15, then I would probably consider upgrading to a different transmission before I went over 500 horsepower. Um, if that helps you, so, but, um, yeah, obviously 342 rears, uh, that's a good middle range transmission or, uh, rear end. So good, decent fuel economy, decent fuel power or, uh, pulling power in uh, fuel economy. So, um, I, I wouldn't say no, um, yeah, but me... I, I would definitely look at the, uh, what, what transmission have and if, if it has a cooler or not. So, yes, uh, I wanted to take one question. Um, how do you read this name? Roscoe. Roscoe. I'm sorry, Roscoe. I think I received your text message yesterday. I apologize. <clears throat> Today has been hectic for me. And uh, I'll get back to you, see if uh, we can get you in next week. Sorry about that for the delay. Uh, oh, excuse me, NTP. Um, NTP is that at the Premier? What? Uh, 
Premier 2000 or warranty. Three. Yeah, um, we've we've worked with uh, a couple of different warranty companies. Actually, had pretty good experiences with those mm -hmm. companies. Um, they actually most of them have paid pretty quickly. well. Yeah, they. I mean, they pay us quickly, and they've they've taken care of the customer. Paid uh, you know sometimes pretty much all of the bill. Yeah. Um, so I know we had one customer that had uh, we did a one box for to put new filters in. DPFs. Uh, I mean, he had about a six thousand, almost a six thousand dollar tab, and uh, they they covered everything. So um, that pretty pretty well covered what he had paid for the warranty into the invoice. One, you know, one so, repair. Yeah, you know, one one job. So yeah. Um, Pittsburgh Power Catalyst. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with that. Uh, I'm personally, I am not a big fan of like all these additives and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not like singling anybody out or, or not. I mean, but I, I've tried a lot of different additives, you know, when I was on the road um, and I just didn't really see a lot of benefits other than like a fuel conditioner um, for the winter time, worrying about fuel gelling up. I mean, I was always, you know, in the winter time, I was always using like, a, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the truck stops, they say that they, they treat the fuel and all that. Um, but I've always in the winter time, just to be safe, I've always used like a house or a uh, power service or something of that nature just to, to treat that fuel. But other than that, um, I, I don't know. I, I've tried a bunch of stuff and just really haven't seen a lot of benefits of it. So, I mean, maybe some other people out there might have some, some different reviews. But um, as far as all these fancy oils, engine oils, stuff like that, um, I've, I've just not – I'm pretty much a Rotella or a Mobile Delvac guy. I'm, I, you know, changing oil more often. Uh, you're – your uh these egr engines they're very very dirty inside i'd rather use a little bit cheaper oil and and change my oil more often and get that soot and carbon and everything out of the engine so you can go up a little bit for people to see well so what do you want to do next <laughs> how do you obtain medical insurance uh, maybe i can grab this in for me well I, first, first of all, uh, I go to the VA, so I'm covered with that. Um, but with Sophia leaving her job, um, she had to look at for our, our two boys and herself. She had to go a different avenue. So yeah, I, it's a, it's a headache for me. It's always been you know been in a corporate world for the past 13 years. So always been covered, never a headache. But now it's it is a headache. Um, been going through some private uh, companies that quote the uh, private insurance. So those came back to be with me and my two boys were roughly at uh, 12, uh, no, $1,200 to $1,300 to cover um, medical, dental, and vision. Um, so I was looking at my COBRA uh, option. That's roughly $1,200. So right now I was just taking the easy route, just went back to the uh, COBRA. So they're going to, I think I have 18 months to cover with my previous employer um that's that's that i i it's just when you're working for uh, another company never had this headaches but now no, yeah think about it <laughs> but I, I i really don't really want to go to the um healthcare marketplace because they are their deductible is so high because they are covering everybody with pre um, medical condition so that's why their um, deductible and the out of pocket is really really a, a lot for people like uh, healthy people like us so um, that's not a route i'm going un unless i'm poor <laughs> well, or get free care i guess that's a, that's an option and i can go but at, at this moment i'm i'm not poor but i'm not i'm not rich in the middle of something that i i that's the, you're not gonna get anything for free yeah. but you're still gonna pay for everything yeah that's that's the problem so. for, for us right now but and lucky that's, for ryan like i said luckily i with my being in the military for 10 years and being in iraq and all that i mean i was eligible for the um uh you know for the va health care so i mean i can pretty well go there for anything but it, it's hit or miss so i mean sometimes they have really good experiences sometimes they have really bad experiences and and then you know you know it is what it is but at least it's i what i've found i've had insurance with employers um i've been i've, I've been with operating engineers uh, union had insurance to them and it's like even though you have insurance like you still have to pay you like i'd get bills for a few hundred dollars where at least with the va you know i don't have you know we don't pay for anything so it's nice for me and that's what's that's what's allowed it's been nice as a as an owner operator and a business owner on my side i really haven't had to worry about it and if i got an issue it's taken care of but, uh, but yeah. yeah so um 
Do I have new mechanic maybe on it? Um, new mechanic. Uh, I have my actually my uncle's come up here. He's been working with me. Uh, he's a union union pipe fitter of uh, twenty five plus years. Uh, so he does all of our welding on the one boxes, and I'm uh, kind of getting him trained to help with that. Uh, pretty mechanically inclined, so he's been helping take the DPFs and one boxes and stuff out, and uh, kind of taking over that side. And it's been a been a, been a good thing for us to have some, you know, family. I guess you know, and I can't say in all cases, but it's nice to have a family here who cares and has the same goals and uh, wants to kind of build something together. So it's been uh, been a good thing for us because we've had a couple guys here, and it's. Just like I've always said, like everybody else, oh, want you put some money in your old truck or buy another, you know, buy another truck and put a truck on. And the thing is, nobody, nobody, nobody's gonna do what you will do in that truck, or you know, nobody's gonna care about the business, you know, the way that that we do. So it's uh, we've kind of like pulled back, and you know, we just kind of want family here right now. And um, once we kind of get the, all the kinks straightened out and everything kind of run a little bit more smoothly. Then uh, we'll probably start. Uh, I mean, we're we're we are kind of looking for somebody now because we we got enough work where I could use an, an additional uh, a person. So I think Sophia's put some stuff out on that before. So, um, what about this? When you increase horsepower, does that increase the torque? Um, where we at? That one. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, with with a horsepower increase, you will see a torque increase as well, but it's not going to be probably as much as, uh, is the whole, I mean, with horsepower, I don't think you're, you're going to see much as far as a percentage price, see as much as a, of a horsepower gain. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I mean, without looking at torque curves and, and, and you know, charts and all that, I mean, I couldn't really give you a, a definite, you know, uh, an exact number on those. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, if any, any increase in, in engine power, you're going to see a torque increase as well. So, um, I think, Where's that? The other one, a uh, cost turbo lag from George. Um, I mean that could be several things. Uh, I mean I don't I don't know if you're talking about if it's an emissions. I mean with a truck with a DPF and a CR. Um, so I mean if you have a, 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 an emissions issue, I mean with your a, a pl face plug DOC or plug DPFs, um, I mean that's going to cause more back pressure. So, I mean, more flow is better. So we, you know, turbo is going to spin faster. So like I said, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what type of, uh, if it's a pre DPF, SCR truck or whatever that you're referring to. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's, I mean, coming from the emission side and what we do here, I mean, that, that could be a, a major performance uh, issue. So as if you have uh, downstream DPF, DOC or DOC, DPF, SCR issues. So the super chaz my death tank keeps uh dripping death fluid what can that be um most of those tanks are plastic so i mean it could have a crack uh it could be the gasket up on the head unit uh so it, it's really hard to say i mean ex other than knowing exactly where it's leaking or coming from um but I, and depending on what type of truck it is i mean like i said you have a like I know, especially on the freight liners, you have the whole head unit that comes down. There's a gasket. There's a big locking ring that goes in. Yep. So, so. Um, okay, what we got here? Yeah, I know. Watch the PA. Some have. Yeah, I've. I've. I'm kind of dealing. I switched down here to Canton, and uh, with my primary doctor, I'm not uh, too happy with right here from my whole up in the. Up in uh, Ravenna, so it's not been very good. Oh God! Um, signs of a Alex sent forty nine supers. So we're <laughs> new to this uh, this uh, super thanks, but uh, I, I assume Alex tip us something. But thank you so much, Alex. Um, yeah. Um, okay, bad. signs of bad air governor. So uh, a governor is what basically controls where your, your air compressor cuts in and cuts out. So if you're building way too much air, like if it's around up like 175, you know, way over, um, roughly 135, then that could be a sign. Or if it's not kicking back in, I mean, if it's dropping way down, um, there's all going to be signs or it could possibly just need, need, um, need adjusted those settings. Um, but a lot of governors, I mean, they're not that expensive. I mean, I think they're 25, 30 bucks basically for a governor so i mean sometimes it's good just to, to replace them so um before we 
get to the end of our video. Guys, if you have any questions for us or any suggestions for the future video, we would like to have mm -hmm. a topic for each uh, video so we can, you know, everybody uh, can prepare for oh, answers and questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, leave us a comment if you have any suggestions. I think in the future we're going to talk about after treatment systems and a lot of guys have issues with that and we can give you some comment issues and you know things we see how to resolve it filter could be clogged um okay so you're talking about your death tank doesn't appear to have any i mean the line i mean depending like i said i don't know exactly what truck you're uh what model and configuration i mean you do have the the lines that come down the back to the uh you know the metering pump or metering i mean metering unit um so i mean there could be a leak somewhere in there but i i don't think the filter um, would cause, I mean, because that, that's not pressurized. The tank's not pressurized, so I don't think a clog filter would, would cause that. But again, um, that would take some more, a little bit more investigation between um, both parties to kind of see what's going on there. So, Yeah, we're getting to the end, guys. Uh, we have 54 people and, and uh, some join us a little bit later. And um, hopefully... This uh, interactions with between you guys and Ryan, then we can get you guys some uh, uh, help. Um, I'm sure there over the years we have people reach out to us. I apologize if we couldn't really get the help you need at the moment because, just as we talked about earlier, Ryan and I, this business is all our income. I, I we already lost one income from my side, so uh, I we have to keep Ryan in the shop to keep running so we can support us giant building that's consuming yeah. our money every single uh, day. Eleven hundred dollar a month gas bills and thousand dollar electric bills and all that stuff. But, so, uh, but um yeah, it's, it's um Thomas Wilson hundred dollars. Um thank you very much. Very generous. Um uh, I really appreciate it. it help us a lot and uh help us motivate it. I mean money can motivate people. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but it definitely help us to you know freight Ryan up for an hour or so to help you guys. And uh, we learn from you guys as well. Keep us posted every day. And if you have any questions, I'm sure I you know what my job is collecting your questions and have Ryan to um to um, talk about it in the live stream session. And uh like I said as far as the uh APU uh we are um Moving forward with that, we have a local customer coming in next week. Uh, it's going to drop his truck hopefully for about two weeks, <laughs> and then we'll start getting calls if it's taking too long. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're, it's going to be kind of a prototype deal. Um, we're, we got the lithium batteries in, we got the APU unit or EPU, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, then we're going to kind of just get one out there, get everything put in, and kind of go from there, and uh, and see how things work, and then build upon that. So, um, but like I said, I I know what it's like. I know when I had a tri pack APU. Things always broken, you know, and then you're listening to the thing too. So I think, uh, you know, if we can come to market with a, a decent electric unit that's quiet and and, and it works, and you can get a, a decent, uh, a, a decent 10, 13 hours without having to run the truck um, for half the price of what a, uh, a a diesel unit cost, I think it'd be good for good for you guys and uh, good for us as well. If we can we can get some units out there. So yep. Sounds good. I think. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, the, I'm sorry, this is kind of a short deal today. I think in the future we're going to try to get this up to about 45 minutes or so um, on a Friday thing. So, yeah. or, you know, so. get your questions prepared. Uh, email us or leave a comment somewhere. I'm going to be collecting questions and we're going to answer your questions uh, during this live session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week at 4 30 fridays um we'll see you there right all right see you guys all right, everybody bye have bye. a good weekend Be safe. thank you